quickly. Okay, good. So again, we've talked about all the, well, many of the primary sectors of infrastructure. We've talked of, about transportation, power, telecommunications, rural, urban, uh, within which we talked about water supply uh, and all of those kinds of things, sewerage, solid waste management, housing. And I think essentially the conclusion that we've come to in some ways is that there is a lot that's being done, many schemes, etc., a lot of money being put in. Uh, there is a lot to do, right? We haven't really built out our infrastructure. The numbers are quite staggering in terms of what infrastructure we need and what we have. Uh, and there are all kinds of challenges, right, in terms of, uh, you know, doing this. Certain sectors seem to have done better than others, but, you know, housing, there are challenges with regards to land. Water, there are challenges with regards to availability of water, recycling, etc. So lots of problems that we need to solve globally. And then as we start going forward, we'll start taking, we start taking a look at projects because projects are the vehicles through which these assets are delivered, right? So generally what happens is you have ministries creating what we call programs or missions, right? So smart cities is a mission, uh, right? There are many other Rajiv Avaz Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Avaz Yojana, JNNURM, Amrit, all of these are missions. But ultimately these missions need to devolve into specific projects where you are implementing one desalination plant or one sewage treatment plant. And those projects themselves will be the will be the arenas where all of these risks and challenges come into play. So when we talk about land acquisition, it's very easy to talk about it in the abstract. But specific projects have specific land acquisition acquisition issues and we've got to figure out how we sort of resolve them. So starting now, we're going to move away from a bit of a sectoral focus and start getting into uh, a project focus, right? So today we're going to try to do two things. One is we're going to talk about uh, group four will talk about what happens on these projects? How are these projects set up? What are the phases that they go through? Who are the kinds of actors that play a role on these projects and what role do they play? Uh, and then I will take over and talk a little bit about the basic estimation, the, the basic economics and finance of uh, these projects. Most of you, I think, already have a little bit of a background in economics and finance. So uh, that's one of the reasons I won't go too deep into it, but it's worth looking at again. Okay, so group four. Who's group four? All right, so who's coming up, Nikita? Uh, we have seen what are the different schemes that government will implement throughout these uh, lessons, previous PPTs. Right now, we will look at how projects are put together. Firstly, we will go with phases, and then we will go with the players. Firstly, concessionite's perspective. Uh, firstly, what is a concessionite? Who is a concessionite? Concessionaire is a person who operates business under some concession from a grantor. A grantor may be some government or some private sector, anyone may be the grantor. And there are different types of concessions. I just named two of them here, BOT and BOO. BOT is like build, operate, transfer. BOO is build, own, operate. And there are even mixed concessions. And if we go through phases, there are mainly three different types of phases. Development phase, construction phase, operational phase. We will go through each one of them. Uh, firstly, development phase. Basically, generally I will give the example. We in future, our parents or relatives, when they are to buy some land, Firstly, they will look at the future value of that particular land. The same thing happens with the government. If it wants to invest in some project, they will look at the future value, what it will give to them. So after seeing that, they invite expressions of interest. Um, I, will, I will give the same case study which have been given in our material. Their government of Pakistan, it plans to develop deep seaport at Gwadar. I will show the geographical location of Gwadar. So if we see Gwadar, uh, it will be near Iran, like Iran and Pakistan border will be there, no? it will be near Iran. So uh, if we see the geographical location, it will be near Gulf countries and even it will be very near to East African countries. So by that we can say if we develop a deep seaport there, it will become hotspot for all the exports and imports. And there is also a road being developed into the hinterland right now. So not only the exports and imports from Pakistan, from also Central Asian states and also Pakistan. And also there is one more uh, place, positive point for this Gwadar port. There is a land, development land in, ar uh, in and around that Gwadar place. So wherein we can actually build uh, export processing units or transshipment yards. And so these are all the things that will be taken into consideration before development of some pro project. This is just one example. And generally, so government has 
uh, decided to build deep seaport at that place and then it invites expression of interest to all the people and what happens then uh, some lead contractor or promoter who is interested in submitting preliminary like who is interested in doing the project wants to submit the preliminary submission whatever preliminary report whatever is there what he has to do is he has to build up a viable team and what he does is he will promote his concept to all the potential partners out there who are interested to work along with him and there will be different ty types of management cultures like um, financial legal technical all those things he has to reflect them he has to be aware of those all cultures and he has to reflect and he has to make such a team which has unique objective of developing that a uh, particular project and after once a viable team uh, he has got a viable team next what he has to do is he has to recruit political and governmental support because if he has no government support many projects they may even um, take a lot of time to complete the project or even they may never be able to complete the project so that is the problems faced by them and uh, during this this all is a development phase and during this whole phase the lead contractor who or promoter whoever is there he uh, recruit one design consultant who will be working along with the contractor's team uh, on the design because uh, contractor knows what exactly he wants so consultant will be working along with him to actually satisfy the contractor and contractor should be make sure should make sure that this design consultant whatever the costs that are incurred to him during different designs uh, that all should be reimbursed by the contractor that's about development fees and after that uh, we will like shadow tolling in developed countries like uk or us what happens is there will be already plenty of roads like in developing countries like uh, india there may be not so many roads very good roads but in us or uk there will be many developed roads so if a person wants to build uh, another road actually uh, this already we uh, you thought okay uh, so uh, if a person decides to build a separate road and if he charge a toll on the people who are actually passing through that road then no one will go through that road they will obviously opt for other road which where they do not charge at all so what happens is shadow tolling is wherein government will subsidize or they will give um, profits to contractor based on the traffic proportional to the traffic whoever is uh, using that particular road and there is also rot um, ROT is mainly used uh, that concession ROT concession is mainly used for um, re, uh, like uh, there will be many roads which will be damaging uh, every year so to develop those roads this concession will be uh, used and uh, generally it happens that uh, um, ROT projects will be shadow toll uh, the projects which are covered under ROT they will be subsidized by the government generally it happens like that or else both the road which has to be developed and which needs to be uh, repaired both will be given to the same company so that the shadow tolling from one road use will be used to subsidize the other project it happens like that. so this is all about development phase and next comes construction and operational phases construction phase is not so like it depends on the project basically the time which it takes um basically throughout the construction phase generally what we will see is uh, what we will observe generally is like national highways um state highways these will be like in a much better quality and we will be surprised in india where corruption is there how can they possibly maintain this quality of roads so one of the reason is because of this t element transfer element in bot formula because that t element whatever is there it actually gives authority to uh, grant uh, whoever gave concession to the contractor to specify what he needs at the end of the project so that that's what i said construction phase will be carried out with transfer element in the bot formula in mind and next comes operational phase operational phase is the longest period of time in the life of the venture um, generally in the like operation during during the whole operational phase the cost incurred will differ throughout the phase initially 
they will actually recruit few consultants, few specialists basically to prepare manuals and everything so that later on they will recruit normal engineers, normal people and uh, they will train them and they will recruit them. Next comes planning of major infrastructure projects. So if we consider major infrastructure projects, it happens that they need to undergo several approvals before they are getting implemented or they are getting financed. So a typical complete planning and implementation process involves these following sequence. First is preliminary report, feasibility report, preparation of contract documents, activities during construction, and then operation. I will go through this. Firstly, preliminary report. Uh, the main objectives of this preliminary report will be like, at the end of the preliminary report, we will be able to know is this project possible? Uh, and me, we may even able to, able to know um, what are the approximate costs that will be uh, uh, occurring throughout this project. And uh, generally, preliminary report, they will start with the data which is already available. Uh, in laboratories and so and so resources and later on they will actually come on fields and they do field surveys to just confirm the uh, report what they had made earlier and next comes feasibility report yeah uh, office studies versus field reconnaissance and surveys and ne next comes field report feasibility report Fe in feasibility report there will be very much detailed information about the technical equipment and financial and economic analysis and environmental analysis everything at the end of feasibility report it will be um, a sponsor will know whether to exactly finance or terminate that project so we will have clear idea at the end of feasibility report and there is one interesting fact uh, there is a difference between financial and economic analysis economic analysis we will actually see the profits benefits and losses that will be incurred from the nation perspective whereas in financial analysis we will see from a, a perspective of some company or a entity enterprise and uh, throughout this process we even have to consider this institutional and legal structures and constraints wherein if you want to move the people from that place to another place or else if few people are getting affected by your project so you have to consider those effects And then comes contract documents. Contract documents include plans and specifications. So uh, mainly after feasibility report, they will obtain tenders from all contractors. Uh, different contractors will be there like, uh, uh, fine, different contractors will be there. I don't know exactly. Uh, but uh, they will prepare plans and specifications to obtain co the tenders. And uh, the relative responsibilities and risks are assumed at that stage by both contractor and sponsor. And next comes the construction phase. They, uh, as like construction phase is same, like uh, when we d discussed already, there are mainly here we will discuss about two costs that will be incurred during the construction phase. Like before investment, people will actually discuss about, uh, for investment, they will discuss about two costs one is direct construction cost and other is contingencies contingencies are nothing but the costs that are possible to incur but we cannot tell with certainty like suppose if floods occur uh, there will be obviously few costs that will be incurred but we cannot tell whether the floods will come or not like that and uh, then next comes the operation period um, this is the same like the Initially, they will recruit few consultants and engineers and they will prepare manuals and they will monitor the performance and later on they will recruit normal engineers, normal people and they will train them and they will actually monitor. Now, this is about the phases and we will come, up, we will come for players in that firstly export credit agencies. So. Uh, export credit agencies are the financial intermediaries between government and export agencies. What they exactly do is they facilitate the exporters. So uh, every country wants to be at uh, edge. They, there is a lot of competition for uh, 
a product if you export from other countries even so these people they will help the exporters basically so what does that mean is agencies that provide financing services like guarantees loans and insurance plan to the domestic companies in order to promote exports from the domestic country so this is uh, export credit agencies and main purpose is to provide a level playing field for all the exporters and there is even a negative uh, aspect for this because if a importer defaults if he does not give the money back to the exporter then uh, these people will be uh, covered by export credit agencies exporters will be covered by export credit agencies but the money will be like the tax payers will be paying that money indirectly so the ta ta the tax payers will be at loss firstly and secondly importers they will be even at loss because generally importers will see at price and quality while before uh, buying that particular product but what happens when financing is given is they will even consider financing so quality and price are a bit neglected we can say and there have been uh, many treaties there is one international treaty signed by most governments and uh, one organization is known as organization for economic and corporation development okay um, this this is been signed by few countries i think 36 countries are part of this of which india is not a part of it and uh, this main purpose is to promote all the norms and regulations and this is just uh, how exactly the money flows through export credit agencies if there are short uh, like if the money is sh like short term like short term money uh, short term loans long term loans will be there if it is short term there will be direct transaction or else uh, there will be an intermediary with uh, to whom the government subsidies or there will be subsidized lately uh, wherein they will Uh, they will lend loan at uh, lower interest rate, but it there will be subsidized lately. So this is exactly a uh, flow diagram. And uh, multilateral financiers. This is one more pair actually. Uh, what exactly is multilateral financiers? Is a financial institution created by a group of countries that provides financing and promotional advising or professional advising for the purpose of development. So. this um, we we may have heard about many regional development banks like asian african caribbean and even we will hear about imf international monetary fund world bank everything so these all are multilateral financiers most of which the main goal might be the main vision might be to reduce poverty and uh, to promote like not to promote to develop all the sustainable Uh, goals whatever are they like employment self employment like that in all the countries and to reduce the differences economic differences between the countries and imf it has been established in 1944 um, in 1930 we had a great depression and in 1944 it has been founded by us basically uh, in order to uh, ensure monetary stability in the world economy and uh, world bank is even uh founded at the same time around same time and in imf initially there were 29 countries at present there have been there are 189 countries and uh, for low income countries whatever are there they will get loan at 0% interest rate from these banks and world bank world bank is actually a group of five institutions there are uh, five institutions ibrd ida ifc mga icsid so these five institutions they constitute to form a world bank group and um, the vision is same to reduce poverty uh, what they will do is financial and technical assistance for developing countries and asian development bank there are many regional development banks of which asian development bank is one of them asian development bank initially started with 31 countries uh, but uh, right now it has 69 countries and of which 19 countries are like other than asian pacific uh, region uh, i think like mostly north american and it has been founded in 1966 and india is um, india uh, uh, like takes so many loans after china india is the second largest loan taker from asian development bank and there are lot more players uh, next will be continued by parthik
Akash. So, uh, Likhita explained about the phases in a, any project and also about the few of the players. I'll be explaining in brief about few other players who are involved in any project. Uh, risk insurance. Uh, any project when we uh, any project when it's undertaken, uh, the expense is too high. So there's al uh, and there's always a risk that a risk that any problems might arise during the project, which might cause the project to stop or fail, government problems, some monetary problems or anything. So a company when it undertakes a project is taking a huge risk. So whenever it takes undertakes a project, it uh, takes a certain insurance. This insurance uh, typically provides coverage against the risk such as currency inconvertibility, expor uh, expropriation and war and is available for from a number of resources. There's, uh, there's a certain premium fix depending on your previous history and the uh, credit score you have. Uh, the project companies, uh, next will be the project companies, uh, these are a corporation, uh, this uh, under an under operating company. These uh, project companies are the ones who, uh, con uh, who undertake the, complete the building, uh, construction of any, uh, any project. Uh, they are the direct or the indirect owner of any project. Some of the examples of project companies might be the Delhi Metro Rail, NDDA, C DCL. Uh, these are the, uh, mostly most of these project companies are subsidiaries or joint ventures of the operating companies, which are the huge, uh, huge companies. Uh, then next player which comes in mind is the banks. Banks are the financial institution licensed to receive deposits and make loans. So when uh, n n no, uh, not most of the companies have the complete capital to start any project. So banks are banks uh, kind of provide the loans and whatever the capital they need to start a project. They charge a certain interest rate on it and uh, be, uh, depending on the uh, later stages the companies tend to uh, repay the banks in uh, installments. Uh, other players involve the government agencies. Uh, so, uh, taking a uh, considering about just Chennai, uh, uh, in every city in India and all over the world, there are different government agencies. Some of the in, uh, government agencies in Chennai include uh, Chennai Metropolitan Development Authority. This is a public sector undertaking of government of Tamil Nadu. This mostly involve uh, takes uh, undertakes the de metropolitan development ca in buildings, in, uh, infrastructure, and all. Next will be the Chennai Metropolitan Water Supply and Sewerage bo uh, Sewerage Board. Uh, the water supply uh, providing water and the sewerage management in the city of Chennai is uh, managed by this board. Next is the Greater, Ch uh, Greater Chennai Corporation. This is a civic body uh, which is uh, headed by the mayor, uh, mayor who presides over 200 councillors, each of whom represents one of the 200 wards of the uh, city. Uh, the when, when Chennai Metropolitan Development and uh, CMWSSB uh, undertake a huge problem, uh, bigger problems, uh, Chennai uh, Greater Chennai Corporation takes uh, care of the problems which are mostly uh, locality specific and uh, comes com uh, considerably minor than these pr uh, these problems and issues. Uh, next player will be the equity investors. So banks provide loans to the uh, any of the project companies which are undertaking a, a project. But equity investors, what they do is they uh, uh, we have to repay the bank. And equity investors, they are the people who invest money in a company in exchange for ownership of the company. Such as whenever a project is started and a per certain person thinks that, OK, this project will be successful and we'll be able to earn some revenue about it, they tend to go to the com project owners and give in such as, we'll give you some amount for a certain stake in this project. But uh, the equity investors have no guarantee for a return of their investment. Most of the cases, so in they completely uh, the investment they give is completely based on their analysis whether the project will be successful or not. So if a company goes out of the business and the project collapses, uh, the equity investors mostly lose all of their money. Another player in this, uh, another player involved is the transaction advisors. So uh, transaction advisors does all the detailed financial, technical, and legal work required to uh, prepare the project sponsor to implement the proposed project. So uh, most of the work about the uh, the main task the transaction advisors had to do is calculate the risk and all the legal, technical work others that is required for a project. The uh, uh, Project companies hire these technical uh, transaction advisors in order to reduce the risk and check out. It means whether the uh, rip, uh, whether it is the project is feasible or is it profitable for those uh, for the uh, project company. Uh, there are a few other players. Uh, Pratik will explain the other players in detail. So the next players are NGOs and the societies. Uh, these uh, these NGOs and societies give people the power to uh, contribute to government policies. Some of the examples are Friends of the River, uh, it's a uh, California based society which uh, helps, uh, helps people influence the policies which are made for uh, a, a river. Uh, next is Citizen Consumer and Civic Action Group. 
so it's based in bangalore and uh, its uh, main purpose are to consolidate the commanding position of consumers in the working of the economy so they have basically a uh, few agendas on which they have proper roles on how they will implement them next is c trust uh, uh, to elevate poverty through job creation and integrated community development and uh, another example is jan agra uh, uh, then there are regulators we have uh, talked about telecom regulator uh, which is try Uh, so there are also regulators uh, in uh, other infrastructure development parts where uh, one is uh, aer is so airports economic regulatory authority of india uh, it uh, it determines what should be the tariffs for uh, uh, services th uh, that planes provide or to determine the amount of uh, development fees and also the passenger service fees uh, they also have other roles and responsibilities Uh, but main are these three in power sector there are uh, cerc this, that is central electricity regulatory commission and uh, the respective state commission uh, these commissions intend to promote the competition among uh, among different uh, players and uh, they try to make a market place uh, the ideal and uh, not make it a monopoly one so next is risk insurance <coughs> uh, akash talked about it so i would just like to say uh, key insurers are unstand young marsh and these people uh, basically uh, analyze what would be the uh, cost of the project of the whole project how much can we insure against it what would be the benefit we can get out of it and etc so there can be uh, other uh, several issues uh, while doing this uh, so they have to determine whether the margins are sufficient to cover the costs and risk associated with the project and uh, putting in place suitable processes to assess and manage infrastructure debt investment uh, and the third is the investing in infrastructure that is best suited to their balance sheet and risk profile so they can't afford to make a loss in uh, such big projects uh, the one which you guys might be most interested in are consultants few examples are deloitte pwc and mckinsey uh, so these are a group of very highly specialized people in uh, different sectors like uh, government policies regu regulations uh, public private partnership po process involvement they have worked with uh, w one of the best in uh, they have worked at the top of their industries and have a huge amount of experience in whatever they they are doing right now uh, so uh, yeah these are uh, these sum up the total players which are there thank you so very comprehensive presentation so maybe we won't spend too much time on it uh, but in future do try to stick to seven ish slides about 10 or so minutes so we can have more time for uh, discussion right so best thing to do is if your looks like you guys are preparing separate slides putting together i think you should talk about what goes in what goes out because there's also some overlap right so one of the things i want to point out is what akash spoke about as transaction advisors more or less the same as what you spoke about parthik as consultants right they're more or less exactly the same right what a transaction advisor does you know some of those bit process management etc are the same right so that was one a uh, couple of other uh, you know just quick things to point out uh, the uh, chennai metropolitan development uh, authority and most metropolitan development authorities actually do not build they actually provide the guidelines permissions they do the zoning they do the master planning the building will be done by the housing and urban development department the tamil nadu housing board in this case or the tamil nadu slum clearance board so there are other agencies that work together uh, and yeah, there are a few other uh, things but overall i think uh, very comprehensive